Metra, the commuter rail operator in Chicago, has many lines. One of these is a little different from the rest. Between the quiet streets of a South Chicago neighborhood, you will find the tracks of the Rock Island Beverly Branch. Each station is four blocks away from the next. Today, large diesel hauled trains rumble through, but in a few years, all of that will change. Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom, and as you might be able to tell, I'm back in Chicago for a little bit. It's been so great to hang out with friends and family, but luckily I also have a few hours today to go film some trains. So I was thinking to myself, what do I want to do today? And I decided to take the Metro Rock Island District. I've been on the Rock Island before, but that line has a specific branch that I find super interesting and I really haven't focused on at all in any of my videos. So today we're gonna to ride the Beverly branch of the Rock Island District. The train leaves in 10 minutes, so I gotta go. Our journey today starts at LaSalle Street Station in the south of Chicago's Loop. This station serves as the downtown terminus for all trains traveling on the Metro Rock Island District. When walking through the station in its current state, it can be hard to imagine that this was once one of Chicago's most important inner city railway stations. It was opened in 1852 by the Chicago, Rock Island, and Pacific Railroad, but for decades it also served as the terminal for the famous New York Central. Today, it's just a commuter rail station. There's a ticket office and a waiting room located on one end of the station, and in here I thought I recalled there being a ticket vending machine, but seeing none, I bought a paper ticket at the office. Fares can also be paid using the Ventra app. At the time of filming, the Rock Island District participated in the Fair Transit South Cook pilot, meaning fares on the line are only half of regular Metra fares. Our train has arrived, train number 603 to Blue Island, Vermont Street. Departure is at 7.30. We have a little time, so let's walk and talk about the Rock Island District. While branded as one line, generally there are two separate services that run over the Rock Island District. Of course, there are always a few exceptions, but generally, trains leaving from LaSalle Street to Joliet use this straight alignment, running directly to Blue Island and then continuing onwards. Along the way, these trains may or may not stop at 95th Street Longwood and 103rd Street Washington Heights. Meanwhile, these so-called suburban trains branch off after Gresham Station and take the Beverly Branch, making all local stops along the branch. These services then usually terminate at Blue Island, Vermont Street. Our train today is one of those local suburban trains that will use the Beverly Branch. In fact, it's the Beverly Branch that we're taking a look at today. All right, looks like we've got one of these old gallery cars. They've got the red leather seats gallery cars I feel like at this point I'm a broken record because I explain them so much on the channel but they're these like double deck cars where the top floor is basically just balconies at the bottom floor um, Metra exclusively uses them right now other systems like Caltrain and VR use them as well I'm probably gonna be Let's try that again. I'm probably gonna be one of the only people on this train because we're traveling in the reverse rush direction. Uh, it's about 7.30 in the morning right now. Immediately after leaving LaSalle Street, we run on the east bank of the Chicago River. On the opposite side of the river, you get a nice view of the Amtrak yard just south of Union Station. Before long, we cross over the currently disused St. Charles Airline, as well as the active Canadian National Freeport subdivision. This track is used by the Amtrak City of New Orleans, among other trains. We begin to pick up speed as we travel through Chinatown, paralleling the CTA Red Line. Somewhere around here used to be the 22nd Street Station, the original terminus of the Rock Island Railroad. The Rock Island, officially known as the Chicago, Rock Island, and Pacific Railroad, was an important railroad that connected Chicago with places like Denver, Colorado, Galveston, Texas, and through their partnership with the Southern Pacific, Los Angeles, California. Back in the 1850s, it was the first railroad to connect Chicago with the Mississippi River. The railroad even employed a young lawyer named Abraham Lincoln to defend it in a case involving a broken bridge. 
Only a few months after opening, they extended service to LaSalle Street Station. Initially, the first stop that any trains made headed south was at Blue Island, but over the course of the 19th century, trains began stopping at several spots before Blue Island, first out of necessity, and later to pick up suburban passengers. After stopping at 35th Street Lou Jones Station, our next stop is Gresham. After that, our train branches off onto the Beverly Branch. This is a branch line with 11 intermediate stops located in the Beverly Hills and Morgan Park neighborhoods of Chicago. We briefly head west before making a sharp turn and continuing in a southern direction all the way to our final stop of Blue Island, Vermont Street. So why are there two branches on the Rock Island? And why are they so different? Well, the answer is in the history. In 1869, a company known as the Blue Island Land and Building Company bought a plot of land near the existing line and began developing residential neighborhoods. This geographical area is known as the Blue Island Ridge and it lies at a slightly higher elevation than most of the surrounding area. Here, the developers built luxury housing in what was supposed to be the nicest suburb in Cook County. At the same time, the Rock Island began building their suburban branch to serve these new communities. In 1870, part of the branch was built. It was called the Dummy Line because it used a so-called dummy, basically a locomotive disguised as a passenger car. In the 1890s, the branch was extended north to its current route. The Rock Island aggressively marketed its suburban service. Come live in the beautiful, serene neighborhoods of Beverly Hills and Morgan Park. Travel to Chicago and back in a day. Work, school, think of the opportunities. So when we step out of the train in a few minutes and it seems like the community is built super close to the tracks, just know that that was intentional. These neighborhoods were built with the railroad. Suburban service on the Rock Island continued to grow. In fact, in the 1950s and 60s, they even used two streamlined aero train train sets on this route. But unfortunately, the Rock Island was losing money. So in the 1970s, the Regional Transportation Authority began funding service. In 1980, they gave the Chicago and Northwestern a contract to run suburban service, but after they dropped out, in 1982, Metro was formed to buy the tracks and operate the trains themselves. It was the first time a public agency in Illinois directly exploited commuter rail service instead of contracting a railroad to do it. And Metro has been running the line ever since. Beverly Hills is where I want to be. This neighborhood is called Beverly Hills or Beverly. I think it's kind of used interchangeably. I'm at 103rd Street Station. I picked a random station on this branch line. It kind of looks like a normal metro station. You know, there's a double track line coming through here, low floor platforms. There's a waiting room that's locked outside of rush hour, which, wait, isn't it rush hour right now? I don't know. But when you look at the neighborhood that this line runs through, 
it already begins to feel a little bit different. A lot of metro stations are way out in the deep suburbs of Chicago, very long platforms, large parking lots. But there are two things that I find most interesting about this branch. One of them is how close like the houses and the parks are to the tracks. You can tell that this was a neighborhood that was, you know, built around this suburban line. But most interestingly, I find the distance between the stations. I can still see the train that I just got off of. Now let's start walking and follow the tracks towards the next station, 107th Street. So the parking for 103rd Street ended over there at 105th Street. Now this is the parking for 107th Street station, which is right over there. So literally where the parking for one station ends is where the parking for the next station begins. Every station on this branch is four blocks apart. So we stopped at 91st, 95th, 99th, 103, next is 107, and so on. Which is just so surprising to me. I mean, when you think about when Metra came into existence, you know, in the 1980s, I'm just surprised they didn't close any of these stations. About 20% of the people that live in the Beverly Hills neighborhood use public transportation, so that may contribute to it. But I just think it's fascinating, especially because you think about the CTA and they have some stations that are close together, but they also have stations that are, you know, more than a mile apart. And yet here we have this suburban, unelectrified line with these heavy double-deck diesel trains. Do you see what I mean though? It took me about five minutes to walk from 103rd to 107th. I look back and I can still see that inbound train stopping at 103rd. I look forward and I'm already seeing the roof of the station building at 111th. All right, 111th Street, Morgan Park. Beautiful station building here. Let's fast forward to 115th Street. This is 115th. And here, Metro's like, no, no more nice station buildings. So we got a very long double deck train pushed by a very heavy, loud, polluting diesel locomotive. Typical Metro, right? 
except we've already established this line isn't very typical for Metra. It's really more of like a neighborhood connector line. I mean, almost the entirety of the service is within Chicago city limits. There are other Metro lines where station spacing is close, but it's never this consistent. Like for several miles, it's just a stop every four blocks. So it makes you wonder, you know, shouldn't this line be more like rapid transit then? I'm glad I'm not the only person who thought that because it turns out in the near future, it might become a little bit more transit-like. So as you may have heard, Metra has ordered battery electric flirt multiple units from Swiss company Stadler, and these will run on the Beverly branch. Last October, we learned that Metra had received a $169 million grant to purchase battery electric multiple units. And on February 21st, Metra confirmed what many of us were secretly expecting. They were going to go with Stadler flirts. They have ordered eight with an option for eight more. The Flirt is a very popular train that you can find all over Europe. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I used to ride these trains every day, and as I'm sure you can imagine, I'm very excited to see them sporting the colors of my dear Metra. Stadler has slowly but surely been playing catch up in North America. You can ride the Flirt and other train types in California and Texas, just to name a few places. Caltrain's new electric fleet is Stadler built, and so are the new trains for Marta in Atlanta. So why is it called FLIRT? Well, FLIRT is an acronym. Originally in German, they've since made an English version. Fast, light, innovative, regional train. Many Stadler trains have slightly romantic names. Just think of the kiss or the wink. I'm just waiting for them to make a suburban electric express someday. These FLIRTs will have a battery pack in the middle, one they can charge at the end of each run. Trains will initially be two cars in length plus the battery pack, but they can be extended to four in the future. They will be built in Salt Lake City, Utah. There are many advantages to these trains, particularly for a line like the Beverly Branch. The most obvious, of course, is emissions. Yes, mining materials for batteries as well as generating electricity come with huge pollution problems that we tend to gloss over and that we need to address. But when you look at the neighborhood, these trains will not only be quieter than the existing trains, they will also spew less gases and particles. In fact, no gases and particles. Metro's locomotives today are some of the dirtiest diesel locomotives you will find anywhere, so it will be a welcome improvement for the community. The second advantage is the weight of these trains. A flirt is much lighter than a traditional metro train, meaning they will do less damage to the rails and the tracks won't need as much costly maintenance. But the biggest advantage that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about yet is this. The flirt has really good acceleration. That's why it's perfect for a line like this where the stops are so close together. It would not surprise me if a full introduction of these flirts leads to faster travel times and higher frequencies as a result. So I can already anticipate the comments, but Tom, what about the winters? And isn't overhead electrification better? So about the winter, first of all, trust me, you do not need to convince me that the winters in Chicago are brutal. I used to work outside in this weather, and it's true that battery performance can be affected by temperature. But in response, I just want to point out Stadler's record for building high quality trains, even in very cold areas. Electric Stadler trains run in places like Finland, Sweden, Switzerland, and Russia, where they've proven their track record in facing the elements. While none of those are battery trains, Stadler does have experience with battery trains in a more moderate climate. So if anyone can pull this off with only minor hiccups, I think it's Stadler. I see no reason to be preemptively pessimistic before anything has even been built. As for overhead electrification, yes, I wholeheartedly agree. It is the cleanest, most efficient, and most robust way to electrify trains. Metra already has electrified tracks, and they literally own the Beverly branch. So Illinois politics aside, it seems like there's not much of an excuse not to electrify. But we've known Metro was leaning towards batteries for a while now, and in light of that, I think this is the best decision they could have made. Remember, the original plan was to convert a few diesel locomotives that were already more than 40 years old to become battery locomotives. I'm really glad that they're ordering these multiple units instead. So yes, electrification, real electrification, would have been better. But given that they've chosen battery power, I think these flirts are the least bad option. Honestly, I cannot wait to see them. This is only a tentative design, but for the most part, I really like it. The only thing I would say is please don't add the candy cane stripes on the front. 
I get it, it's a Metra thing, but the stripes fit well with the boxy shapes that Metra trains have previously had. On a curved, streamlined shape like the Flirt, they look terrible. After 119th, it gets a little bit difficult to keep following the line because the busy road here doesn't even have a sidewalk. So luckily there's a pace bus coming soon that'll take me to Blue Island, Vermont. That's where we'll end the video. Very glad I caught that bus. Saved me a lot of walking. Barely missed it too because its tracker was way off. Uh, right over there is the Blue Island, Vermont station. All right, this is Blue Island, Vermont. This is where the Beverly Branch gets back with the main Rock Island District line. Um, and it's where I'm gonna end this video today. Uh, you can transfer to the Metro Electric District here as well, which uses a separate platform back there. I actually had a lot of fun exploring the Beverly Branch. It's a little bit chilly today, but you know, walking to visit station to station, it kept me warm. I feel like if you're a professional runner, you could probably race the trains here. Stations are really that close together. I will be back because I am super excited for these battery electric multiple units. Um, after, you know, the, all the diesel locomotive decisions Metro has made recently, I didn't think battery multiple units or any kind of multiple unit would happen anytime soon. So I'm really, really looking forward to coming back here and testing those out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. I have more content like this coming and you won't want to miss it. See you next time.